All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, on this trip, we are at Thousand Trails, Oceana, and Washington. I'm going to give you a little tour here of the campground. And as luck would have it, we are right up front. So actually all this uh, grassy area right here is pretty much ours because our site is right here. It's for everyone, but these trailers over here are employees in long term. And they too are right at the very entrance. The entrance also has these trailers over here. These are all full hookups. They're the only ones that are full hookup in the park. This is the check-in. So when you arrive here, you check in on the right side and they give you a code right here for the gate on the left side. Straight ahead on the left here, we have the men's and women's restroom and shower rooms. The building over here on the right is the clubhouse. And they have laundry on that. And it looks like a fish cleaning station or crab or whatever. These few spots right here in front of me are also full hookup but this will be the end of them like a nice little picnic area here people like to bring their chairs out and put their feet in the grass here so that works out pretty well and see laundry room in the clubhouse here it's also a Wi-Fi hotspot. There is a uh, really good internet connection up in this area. So we have a Starlink and it is hooked up. And we haven't had any internet issues. So it's a little spotty here and there, but for the most part it's worked really well. Now we're getting into just the basic setups here. So you have water and power in these sites. There's people constantly coming and going. It's between 12 and 1 o'clock right now, and that's 12 o'clock is checkout time. Over here, you got a circular spot. It looks like there's probably a dozen sites in here. Some more picnic tables over here. I'm pretty impressed with how well the campground is maintained here. You know, for campgrounds, this is uh, one of the nicer ones. There's not a lot of privacy here between you and your neighbors. However, the grounds are kept well maintained. And here we're going to cross the bridge to the back half. Got a fishing spot right here. And the trees way down there on the left, that's where everybody kind of goes to fish. I don't know if there's any fish in here or not. But it's it's pretty nice. To the north, I've never seen anybody doing anything, or sorry, to the south here, I've seen nobody doing anything here. But again, it's really pretty. There are a lot of dogs in this campground. 
and it's very dog friendly a lot of cool dogs now that we're across the bridge here there's a horseshoe pit right here it's like there's two two pits and again they look well maintained there is one way travel where the uh, campsites actually are. We're going to go the right way on this. And they do have signs up that tells you, you know, one way and wrong way and all that. There is quite a few sites open today. These usually uh, will fill up by around 5 o'clock. But all afternoon there will be RVs coming in and out. and Mostly in. The ones that have left should have been out, you know, an hour ago. So here on the back half is the restrooms and the showers for this section. There's a little playground up ahead. There's a big open field that we're coming up to here. There's also a volleyball net back here. So this is one of their little ATVs that they do the maintenance with. Looks like they're uh, cleaning one of the restrooms now. That's what I say. They do have a really well job of maintenance here. In the past, there's been people that have stated, you know, this place was terrible, wasn't very well maintained. So I... I have not noticed that. Hi. There's a little bit of overflow parking here. And the volleyball court and the playground that I told you about earlier. So there is tent camping here also. So, like, way off over there, there's some sites. This is the trail to the beach. There's actually a tent spot. Hard to see with the sun glare, but over there. I'll just take you on out to the beach here, show you the little path. Another tent site here. So this is the path to the beach. Again, it's pretty well maintained here. This time of year, um, there is actually a burning ban. We're in the uh, middle of September. And back around the 4th, they had some kids out here playing with fireworks. And unfortunately, they started a fire. It looked like it might have been about a quarter acre in size. But it was here in the sand dunes. So but it's a pretty nice walk. I mean, you look, it's all all brushy. It's quiet. I don't know if you can hear it yet, but the uh, ocean is roaring out there today. Got some pine trees and there's some uh, 
scotch broom out here. And So we're at the Thousand Trails Oceana this week and I just took a walk down to the beach here this morning to walk the dog and it's a big beautiful beach down here. It's practically deserted so I can let the dog off leash which is really kind of cool. And as you can see by the tire tracks down here you can actually drive on this beach which is kind of cool. You can't drive to it from our campground. I see trucks coming from that direction so somewhere down there there's a place you can get on the beach and drive the whole length of this thing. It'd be great for having a tailgate party out here. Uh, looks like there might be some nice fishing. I saw fishermen up the way a little bit ago on my way down. I don't know if he's catching anything or not but uh, all in all it looks like a great little beach and the weather is absolutely perfect today. Looks like something you'd see in a Harry Potter movie. Check these big cedars out. They named this road Big Cedar Road. And I'm telling you, there's some huge cedars. These things are amazing. Whoa, look at that. We're, up at, we're up in the Olympic Peninsula. Another big one back there. They're just all around us here, everywhere. Absolutely gorgeous. Glad we made the stop. None of them are real tall. The tops are all out of them. All right, that's it for now. So today we're headed um, straight up the coast. The other day we went up 101. Well, we went over and connected with 101 and went up that direction. Today we're just gonna go straight up the coast and uh, see what we can find along the coastline. Looks pretty interesting, we'll let you know.
So we ran across this really cute little town just up the road from where we're at. It's called Seabrook. Uh, it's got, I don't know, really cool looking neighborhoods. It's got a nice little downtown area. Tequila bar. I mean, who doesn't love a tequila bar? Unfortunately, we seem to be here on a day where most of the businesses don't look like they're open. I don't know, maybe it's their winter season already or something. I don't know. It's a Wednesday, so I would think that people would be open. This looks like it might be a fun place to come like in the summer though when everything's open and everything's bumping. Got some good shopping down here. Nice dining. It does creep me out just a little bit that all the houses seem to look the same, kind of like Stepford. Anyway, that's our little downtown tour of Seabrook, Washington. We just stopped and talked to the uh, landowner out here who has given us access to the ghost forest. Um, we're not there yet, but you can see the kind of road that he's got on his property here. And he said basically it's the only access to the ghost forest. Uh, the only other way to get to it would be if you brought a boat up the river and you would have to find somewhere to land your boat. He said, there's not really any place up here to do that either. So i um, really grateful to the landowner who provides access to this space out here. And he told us the story of it about how a tsunami hit in the, in 1700 and um, the land dropped about five feet and which allowed the brackish water to come in and inundate the trees and it ended up killing them all so uh, I'll show you once we get there. All right so we made it to the uh, ghost forest here and evidently there was an earthquake and it dropped all this ground five feet and that allowed the water to come in or a tsunami and it killed this whole forest in here and this is all that remains it's kind of cool they're just old dead cedar snags here happened in 1770 in january i believe so it's pretty cool nice river that runs up through here and see if we can zoom in on some of these trees hard to find this place but it's well worth it once you do so we're in the ghost forest of um, it's near Kapalas Beach in Washington and um, there's a big section of it over here and then they have a nice little uh, picnic table and grill area set up here. And then we stopped here because we saw these, this other little section over here, which is a lot closer to where we are. Um, but there's this huge tree stump out here. And it looks like it's a, uh, if you just look like it, look at it, it looks like it's got, you know, new, new growth coming off of it. But that puppy's been dead for over 300 years, so I don't think it's got new growth coming off of it. But it kind of looks like it. But 300 years later, and this is just now having life come back to it. So that salt water really did a number on this. 
So here's some more of the ghost forest here. A little smaller stand of trees. And then I found this cool little trail we're gonna walk out. It's just like a spot with a bunch of trees growing on it. And there's a lot of tree roots. So I'm gonna try and do this without falling down and killing myself. This is a pretty cool little area out here. As you can tell, it's rough. Bad camera work right now. But yeah, what, this is another view of that ghost forest over here. It's pretty cool. I don't know how far this trail goes, but we're going to continue for a little bit here. Thor is having the time of his life out here. All right, I'll catch you in a little bit. These guys are pretty serious around here. You definitely want to watch out for these warning signs. gonna be eaten out of this. Where are we? Okay, we're at Bennett's Fish Shack in Ocean Shores, Washington. This place has been voted um, best fish and chips. I'll let you know here in a little bit. I ordered the halibut fish and chips and it looks absolutely delicious. But We'll see how it turns out. Okay, well, uh, I have to say that was some of the best halibut fish and chips I've ever had. Uh, definitely did not fall off a Cisco truck. It was hand battered. It was very nicely done. Uh, French fries were also really great. And uh, the Bloody Mary, yeah, it was pretty good too. He never wears out. <laughs> okay, let's he go. loves being at the beach. Loves putting his foot on the ball so he can't get it. Come on. Hello everyone. We're here at Blackbeard Brewing Tap House in Westport, Washington. The beer in front of me is a strawberry blonde ale, a 5.2% ABV. And you can definitely taste the strawberry in it. Very good beer. I'm not sure how many of these I'm gonna have, but I'm at least gonna have this one. Retta's out somewhere shopping. She didn't want any beer because she hates beer. But anyway, I'm going to enjoy it while I'm here. Catch you on the next one. So we came down to the beach here and Thor is going nuts. He's ready to get out and go play. I don't know if you can hear him. Or even see him. He's crazy. Well, we made it back home. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, trip as much as we did. We saw a lot more than you did. <laughs> Should have went with us. Anyway, um, back to reality now. We got yard work and when you're gone you always got to catch up on everything mow the lawn and all that but it was a good trip we're gonna be taking another big one here in a couple of weeks so you'll get to see some of that yeah join us in uh isla mujeres 
off of the coast of Cancun. We'll be doing some beaching. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's it. Till next time. And remember, when you're retired, it's always 5 o'clock.